In cybersecurity, memory forensics is a subset of computer forensics that analyzes volatile memory, usually on a compromised machine. In Windows OS, it corresponds to the random access memory, RAM, and its content is flushed with every reboot or shutdown, making it one of the usual initial tasks to perform during an incident. The process differs from disk forensics analysis, since it not only provides information about what resides on the target computer, but also provides us with information about the processes or applications that were running at a particular time and detailed information on the execution flow on a system that may not be present in regular storage units or application logs. This memory analysis can help us with an immediate snapshot of an application's or a timestamp of an attacker's actions. This is crucial since evidence collected through memory forensics can become invaluable in creating a chronology of events. During the memory acquisition phase, we copy the live memory to a file, commonly referred to as a dump, to perform the analysis without risking losing the data from an inadvertent reboot on the compromised system and have proof of the analysis as needed. After the acquisition phase, we start the analysis phase. There are several ways to acquire the memory from the target machine if needed. Several tools can help us, but which one to use will depend on personal preference and the OS involved in the imaging task. For example, for Linux systems, we can use Lime or DD. For Windows, we can use FTK Imager or Encase. And lastly, for Mac OS systems, we can use OS PMEM. We can use Start Volatility by invoking the Help menu and going over the various options and arguments to correctly use the tool to analyze memory images. In volatility, plugins provided extended functionality to volatility by offering various options to extract artifacts from all operating systems, such as Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. For example, we can use the following command to get the list of plugins for Windows OS. Similarly, we can use the help switch to get the list of plugins for both other operating systems, such as Linux and Mac OS. Okay, let's start analyzing the given memory dump. Since we know that this is a memory dump taken from Windows OS, we can get the list of the plugins that we can use for Windows. First, we start with windows.info to gather information about the target OS. By executing this command, we can see that the tool gives us a multitude of technical details, such as the kernel base, the system root, and the OS version. Okay, we will start directly with task four. Is the architecture of the machine x64 bit? Let's get back to the output of volatility. We see here preliminary information about the target system. If we look closely, we can see the field is 64 bit value is true, which means that the system architecture is 64 bit. Next question What is the version of the Windows OS? Back to the output, we can see the field NT major version and the value is 10, which means that the OS version is Windows 10. Okay, what is the base address of the kernel? Back to the output, we can see the field kernel base, and it clearly spills out the address of the kernel. Another important plugin in volatility is the windows.netstat, which can be invoked with this command. This plugin gives a complete dump of the network activity. In here, we can highlight the connection parameters, such as the IP addresses, ports, the state of the connection, as well as the process executable and its identifier. For example, the first entry highlights a network connection on port 80, and we can also see the executable initiating this connection. Another important aspect of this output is the state column. Established means that the network connection is ongoing. During forensics investigations, these connections are given priority because it indicates the presence of active processes communicating with external addresses. For example, here we see an established connection where the source port is 3389, which means that someone is using RDP protocol to log in and remotely manage the machine. Another important plugin in volatility is the windows.ps3, which can be invoked with this command. This plugin gives a complete dump of the processes in a hierarchical tree where we can see the child process and the parent process along with the process identifier and the executable image. This helps us establish relationship between processes as can be seen here in the DL host process. Here, by looking into the parent process ID, which is 636, we can see that the parent process is the service host process. 
Another interesting process is the critical update process. Here, we can highlight its parent ID and its own ID. Also, the interesting process updater has a parent ID 1648, which makes it a child process of the critical underscore update process. Using the plugin windows.netscan, can you identify the IP address that establish a connection on port 80? All right, windows.netscan is a plugin that gives us similar output to windows.netstat we used previously in that it allows us to view network connections parameters. Looking into the output, we can see several connections on port 80 with one connection marked as established. As we said earlier, established connections are given priority in forensics investigation. Therefore, the source IP for this entry is the answers for this question. Using the plugin windows.netscan, can you identify the program used to access through port 80? All right, back to the output, we can easily see that Microsoft Edge is the executable that is initiating the connection on port 80. Moving on, analyzing the process present on the dump, what is the PID of the child process of critical underscore update? If we go back to the output of windows.ps3, we can see the process critical underscore update and its child updater.exe. We can highlight the PPID and PID of updater.exe and we can see that the PID is 1612. Okay, lastly, what is the timestamp time for the process with the truncated name critical underscore update? Again, in the same entry, we can highlight the timestamp of both processes very easily. Let's copy the timestamp and answers with it. Since now we're more interested in these two processes, we can dig deeper using windows.filescan plugin. This plugin will give a big output of the files that were accessed on the machine. Therefore, we can redirect its output to an output file. All right, cool. This is rather long output. Let's use grep command to filter the output and pinpoint the updater process. And as you can see, we now have the location of this process on the target machine. Okay, the MFTSCAN plugin allows us to view an output similar to the one provided with Windows.filescan. We will go ahead and specify an output file and use GREP to filter the output to only show the updater process. As you can see, with this plugin, we are able to pinpoint the timestamps of the updater process. Okay, next we can view the full memory content by dumping the memory map of the updater process using windows.memap plugin and specifying the updater PID, which is 1612. We use the dot after io, indicating that we want the output to be stored in the current working directory. After executing the command, we can see that the output file has the extension .emp and its content can be viewed using the string command and piping it to the less command to make the output more manageable. Here we can see artifacts such as directory locations and URLs such as this one, which looks interesting. Another thing we notice is this file that was referenced earlier as the file that was deleted by the attacker, so it's worth investigating. Since we spotted a URL pattern, it will be worth investigating if there are any HTTP requests captured and logged in this memory dump file. Usually these requests can be viewed if we look for the strings located 10 lines before and after the URL. We can use this combination of switches to execute this command. Okay, if we go over the output looking for any request and response combinations, we can see this HTTP response to the request that was sent to the attacker URL. This request is probably to retrieve keys to perform encryption and decryption on the compromised machine. Another request we can see is this one, and down there, there is this string cafe babe, which is probably the text content of the file requested in the URL. All right, analyzing the windows.filescan output, what is the full path and name for critical underscore update? Okay, let's go back and take a look at the output file that contains the list of the files accessed. If we use greppy and filter for the name of the executable critical underscore update, we can easily highlight the location of this file on the target machine. Let's copy that and use it as the answers for this question. Okay, next, analyzing the windows.mftscan.mftscan, what is the timestamp for the created date of important underscore document dot PDF? All right, we need now to open the other file that contains the list of open files with timestamps. Using grep and filtering for the file name, we can pinpoint the timestamps and then we can copy that and use it as the answer for the question. Okay, great, last question. Analyzing the updater.exe memory output, 
can you observe the HTTP request and determine the server used by the attacker? Remember the HTTP responses we spotted earlier? If we take a look again, we can see that the web server name is Python, and we can also see its version. All right, so far this is everything for this room. I hope this journey was informative, and I will definitely see later. Cheers.